Good evening. My name is Stephen Jackson. Now, this is my speech on a controversial topic. <laughs> Our topic for this evening is uh, women in the military. There are a lot of people out there who believe that women have no place in the military, that they need to be in a kitchen or something like that around the house, barefoot and pregnant. That's so far from the truth. It's not even funny. I'm, I'm qualified to speak on this because I'm a, I'm a master sergeant in the United States Air Force. Been in the Air Force almost, almost 17 years. I've served under colonels and chiefs and senior master sergeants. I've served with women in overseas locations and I've supervised women uh, here and abroad. So I've, I have a pretty broad perspective of you know what women are are capable of in the United States military, and the truth be told, just to not even mince words, they're capable of everything that that males are capable of, if given the same opportunities, if the playing field is level. So we'll we'll get into our we'll get into our main points. Um, just give you a little history on the the first enlistees of of each service, um, the pros and cons that, that come with women being in the military, and my experience with female soldiers, airmen, airmen, marines, and et cetera. A little history. Um, our, our first enlistee was part of our nation's oldest service, the United States Army. Her name is Deborah Sampson. Uh, she, she wanted to join so bad that uh, <laughs> she hid her gender from her superiors. And for a long time, you know, she would get injured and she would, she would tend to her own wounds and uh, in an effort to hide her gender. Well, she got injured so bad this one time that, uh, that a doctor ha had to see her, had to tend to her. And then he didn't himself turn turn on her or turn her in. Some uh, some superiors found out through another source that she was a female, but she had served so honorably and done so many good things that they gave her an honorable discharge. Uh, our next our next enlistee were actually there were twenty of them. <laughs> the United States Navy. They called they called them the Sacred Twenty. They were part of the they were all nurses in the uh, in the medical corps of the Navy. The Navy calls them corpsmen, and they they were the first females to uh, to enlist in the Navy. The next one that we have is uh, Ofa Mae Johnson, United States Marine Corps. Any of the females in the Marine Corps can tell you without skipping a beat who the first female to enlist in the Marines were, was. They'll, they'll shout it out. It's Ofa Mae Johnson, and they're, they're proud of it, and they, they should be. The, the next enlistee is from, from my service, United States Air Force, Esther Blake. Esther Blake joined the United States Air Force. She was actually a part of the Army Air Corps, which later on became the United States Air Force. She joined the United States Air Force in 1948, a year after the Air Force became its own service. She stayed on active duty until around 1954, 1955-ish. Uh, our, last, our last one is uh, Myrtle Hazard. She was, uh, she was an electrician in the Coast Guard. Some say that there were a, a, a group of sisters, twins, that, that enlisted before her. But Myrtle Hazard actually gave the oath of enlistment to enlist in that particular service. The other two, they switched over from the Naval Reserve and, and enlisted into the Coast Guard. But Myrtle Hazard was the actual first Coast Guard enlistee, female enlistee. Next, we have some of our, our pros and cons when it comes to females in, in the military. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, we have 
there's still an old chauvinistic mindset that says that women don't belong in the military, that they belong in the kitchen, cooking, barefoot, pregnant, doing dishes, doing laundry, foolishness like that. We live in 2016, uh, and I can tell you, since since I've joined the military, I've seen I've seen females do some awesome things, some incredible things in the military, and to say they don't belong is nothing far, is is far is farthest from the truth. Pros, you know, you get a unique perspective from from the female mind, as far as how to deal with troops and how to how to approach certain things. There, there's not this there's not this hard callous hammer of a mindset that it, they, I, I've heard people talk about the female touch and I've seen it in in my workplace. I've seen it in other workplaces and it's the truth. They they bring a, a lighter a lighter mindset, a lighter idea in into into view and. When when they when they put their hands to stuff, a lot of the time it it works. It gets done just as good as if a male would do it. Um, my experience with with female with female soldiers and airmen, in my in my experience, and I used the two the two females that I supervised. They they were incredible workers. One one was was incredibly good with her hands. You know, she knew all about tools and things of this nature, and you didn't have to tell her to work. You didn't have to, uh, you didn't have to make her work. It, it was more so you had to make her stop working. You know, and the other one, she was incredibly smart. She could she could think her way out of anything. Now, as far as the the physic the physical aspect, she needed help carrying certain tools that were heavy and and things of that nature, but. There are males who need the same help. You know, I, I, I didn't mark her down on, on any of her performance reports because of that. She was an incredible worker. And just like, just like the other one, you didn't have to tell her to work. You didn't have to necessarily line everything out for her. She was, she was always willing to learn, willing to learn, ready to learn, and learned at an incredible rate. Just... There, there's so many, there's so many great things that females have brought to the military, and it's a, and it's a crying shame that it gets, it gets marred by an antiquated mindset. So, in summary, what, what we talked about was the history of females in the military. We, we lined out the one, the, the first enlistees of each service, the, the pros and cons of females being in the military. In my opinion. My humble opinion: There's more pros than cons. Uh, in my experience with female soldiers and, and airmen, um, my name is Stephen Jackson. I thank you for uh, listening to my speech.